Discover how the Word of God can bring a change in your life through the teachings of Bishop Eddie Addy. Bishop Eddie Addy is an assistant to Bishop Daniel Mills and serves as the resident bishop of the Macarius Church. Anointed, energetic, and a practical teacher, the servant of God will inspire you with practical teaching of the Word of God that will refresh you, energize you, and bring healing to your body, soul, and spirit. Now, to the message. Whatever, whatever you do, God take your joy from you. Oh, whatever, whatever you do, God take your joy from me. We need it, we need it. Whatever you do, God take your joy from me. Wow. May He mold you, shape you, anoint you, mold you into the image of his dear son. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Fantastic. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your blessing in gathering us together again. We are together again praising the Lord and experiencing his blessing through the fellowship of his Holy Spirit. This morning, as we approach your word, we ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know the hope of your calling and what is the riches of the glorious inheritance you have in the saints and the exceeding greatness of your power, which you demonstrated when you raised Christ from the dead. May our eyes be opened. May our ears be open. May we come to a great understanding of your will for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Clap your hands. You may be seated. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to be in his presence one more time. We are launching our new series on seven great principles. Seven great, great principles of life. And um, each of them has around seven principles. Each of the seven great principles also has seven great principles or more or around that figure to help you understand them. What is a principle? A principle is a revelation. A principle is a deep understanding of how something works. Okay? So when you understand how something works, it helps you to develop. It helps you to be established. And it helps you to advance. Are you listening to me? Human beings have understood principles that made kites fly. A kite. Do you remember kites? A kite. When I was young, around nine years, ten years, my home was like the center for general children's playground. And I remember that I used to string a kite with the long one that the women used for their crocodile black thread. The one that they roll on some wooden, I don't know, a roll. It had a roll, then not a paper roll. Oh. It used to have some, I don't know whether plastic or wooden something. I think it was 500 meters or I don't know how many, how long it was, but it was very long. So I used to use that to string my kite and I joined two of them together and the kite would go far into the sky. And sometimes this, the wind would tear the string and then I will not find my kite again. 
But there are principles that govern how a paper you make can fly. And men developed it into flying aeroplanes. Today, sometimes about 700 people, almost 1,000 people can be in an aeroplane and it is in the sky. They are drinking tea, they are eating chicken, rice, listening to music, they are sitting down coolly chatting in the air for hours. I've been on a plane 14 hours. It was not easy. Non-stop flight. When I think we are going from, um, I think it's Dubai to Australia. Very long flight. Human beings have understood the principle. That's how come air travel has become so, if you like, even probably the safest means of transportation than even a car, automobile. It is that same understanding that has advanced human beings that we don't just fly from Ghana to England or Ghana to America, but we can fly from Earth to Mars. And, and they are now, they've gone to Mars, they've sent the rover, he's there, he's taking pictures, it's a what? It's an airway. <laughs> it's called perseverance. <laughs> so my airway brother says it's an airway because he's called perseverance. <laughs> hey, I didn't say it too. It's my airway brother who is saying because it's that like he's called perseverance. Because the name of that rover is perseverance. And he's there. Even as we are here, we've heard it. It's like Nothing is happening. But it's a major achievement of life. I think it was last year that they went in a new way. Was it last year or two years ago? Last year. Yeah. That they went. They hadn't, America hadn't been for a long time. Then they developed this new way of going. And they went very successfully, very fast. And they went to the space station. Yes. ISS, International Space Station. They docked there. They sent, they are doing various experiments in outer space. Those principles, some of us don't understand them. Because the principles that govern space travel is not the same as taking Uber. Hey. The precision, calculation, the years of planning. Years of study, the things they study, the things they eat, and the things they take along to go and eat there. I mean, some of you, you can't even change from banku to rice or from rice to spaghetti. If somebody serves you noodles, it's like, what is this? Ah, where, 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 is, where, is, the, where is the food? Where is the real food? Ah. <laughs> All of you on Facebook, you are welcome. Please like our page. And then encourage your friends, add your friends to it, like our page, and share so that your friends can also be uh, participating in what we are doing here. Say amen. amen. Those of you on YouTube too, you are welcome. And those on Sweet Melodies and uh, Dofopa FM, you are all welcome. Thank you for always being online with us and on air with us and uh, sending us your encouraging words. We are blessed by them. So learn great principles because they are great foundations upon which you can develop. God wants you to have a solid foundation. In um, Psalm 11 and verse 3, the Bible says, If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? God wants you to have a solid foundation so that if you believe the things you are supposed to believe, you become very strong spiritually. Nobody can shake you. In Ephesians chapter 4, we are told that there are winds of doctrine. The winds of doctrine, they can sway you. Yes. The Bible says he gave some that we, we, uh, 
we become to the full, verse 14, Ephesians 4, 14, he says that, um, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro by and carried about by every wind of doctrine. You are not supposed to be a child who is carried about by every wind. Any new thought just sways you. You change your church, you change your friendships, you change your associations, you change where you go to church, and you are just swayed by every wind. And the, and the winds are blowing all the time. It never stops blowing. Up till today, there are people who fight against the church and they try to send confusion and teach things that are not biblical and try to confuse teachings that we have, that you have been taught, that you have been instructed in, that you have held on for many years. Do you see? And, and sometimes the reason why many people get swayed is because the ordinary individual Christian, he is not, he, he does not himself personally, you know, take time into what he has been taught to educate himself and have a personal strong conviction on what he has been taught. It's like once the church has taught it, it's enough. But you see, what I'm teaching and what is taught in the church cannot be the only thing that you live on. Your foundations can easily be destroyed and you will not, as a righteous person, be able to do much. And it is because you yourself have to personally come to the point where when they teach, you don't just hear it in the church and say, I was blessed. I mean, yes, you can say you are blessed and you are we were happy in the church and it was a good word. But after that, you are supposed to take the word of God and you are supposed to go through the verses, the points yourself and assure your heart that this is the word of God. Not that it is something that my church, you know, in our church, they say, you know, in, 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 in as for Lighthouse, we believe that. Do you see? My pastor often says, as for you, your church there, only what your pastor says is what you take. As for Lighthouse, I hear your pastors say, and there are people who are throwing this type of winds of doctrine all around. And people who don't even understand the Bible, they try to make a comment about things that they don't even understand. <laughs> So, I'm trying to show you, and in this series, we are trying to learn principles, how things work in the kingdom, how things work in the church, how things work, and it's all Bible-based stuff. Yes. So that your foundation will be solid. You won't say the amen well. Sister, uh -huh, thank you very much. I was going to call you, and I see that you have put your nose mask back. Because you, when you said the amen, I could see your mouth and your nose. <laughs> Occasionally, when you bring it down, you breathe properly, then you pull it back again. Yeah. By the way, I went for my job on Friday. So, um, um, I'm, I have the second one on the 5th of March. So, if you, the vaccination you are called upon, go and take it. It's not a problem. It cannot kill you. Yeah. It cannot kill you at all. Take a little wine for thy stomach's sake. And they're often infirmities. So it's not, sometimes some things are given just to help to, if the pandemic is a demon, and there's a vaccine that is also fighting the same demon, and you have prayers that are fighting the same demon, why don't you use the prayers and the vaccine to fight the same demon? Uh, for me, it's not a problem for me. Some people say if you have faith, you don't have to. It is the same thing that people have said when the faith message was on, that brought confusion and, and, and set many people disillusioned about Christianity. But Christianity is not about if you have faith, don't take medicine. That's not it at all. There is, there's no way in the Bible that medicine is against the scriptures. So please, if it's your turn to take, take. Now you're free. What? Now share mask and also come. 
then you are balanced in both. So prayers are binding pandemic and yes. destroying coronavirus. Vaccine is also destroying coronavirus. Nose mask is also preventing it. And then what? Social distancing and the washing of hands. Add all to your life. Now, Jai so I say, I'm sorry, we are more, more. Add the money fit. Money fit. Money fit. Now, Moshe has a nose mask, PC. By the way, the president who says we should wear nose mask, so in the church we do. And then we have social distancing. And then, and so on. So we are blessed. <laughs> my COVID passport. <laughs> Are you there still? Yeah. So, brothers and sisters, we need to be strong. Yes. Well, even this, if you don't have a certain understanding, it also affects you. You meet somebody who tells you and says that, look, these days it is all past. There's nothing like Medicine, God's power is whatever. Then pa udi echire. Then you go ah, you see that now. After we jari a uye u, after we hear a drug, then last minute they give you the medicine. You see, why didn't you take it earlier? But you see, every wind of doctrine can sway you. Somebody, somebody says he he doesn't take medicine and he doesn't go to hospital and he doesn't get sick. That is his faith. If your faith level hasn't reached there, oh sorry, I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh sorry, I'll... why ask you? Oh, yeah. When you get up, your knee is paining you. Brother, take parai. So, till the time comes when your faith is strong enough so that you don't have to take medicine even when you are sick. Take it now, brother. Sister, oh, brekwa. So, well, This one is simple advice, so common sense advice. You see, but if you are solid in your faith, you are not shaken by. If I take medicine and you say I don't have faith, I will not be sad because I know I have faith in God. But I still take medicine sometimes if I need to. I do. I take vitamins every day, vitamin C. Menom vitamin C every morning. Yes. If you won't take and you exercise and that's what is your portion, please. Fine. But what I'm saying is that you need to be solid in the things you believe because there are winds of doctrine that are swaying us away. And then you need a depth of understanding of what you claim to believe or the Christianity you have become a part of so that your Christianity is great, it's powerful. It's, it's demonstrable. It's practical. I just go at the Christian and say you are a Christian. Bible cry, you will never read. Because you don't have a certain understanding of the role of the Bible in your life. That's why we are preaching about seven great principles for our Christianity and our life. They are different ones. Yes. And the principle will advance you when you understand. What does a, a principle helps your understanding of how things work? Yes. And based on that, you advance. You go forward. You, you, you flourish. And you prosper. That's why medicine has prospered. When they discovered that, um, what did they discover? They discovered antibiotics. Penicillin was the breakthrough that brought the end of plagues and devastations that ravaged the earth and spoiled many people and destroyed many lives. But once they discovered penicillin, I mean, this antibiotic is like, wow. Instead of dying tomorrow, you see that you live long. Yes. They discovered how blood works in our bodies. That the thing is running, it's not just, it's not like 
A liquid that stays in your body is just there. When they prick you, then some will come. But it's something that is running through your veins, even to know what veins are. That there's a difference between veins, uh, arteries, uh, and what? And, and then what? The capillaries. Do you know all these things? You, you don't understand them. So you don't have a certain depth of understanding. So you have not advanced medically yourself. Look, medicine has advanced. All these discoveries have helped us to go forward. The principles that govern human life, how human life comes about. We take an egg from a woman, a sperm from a man, and then they join them. Yes. So you can pick a woman, pick her egg, pick a man, pick his sperm, join it under some conditions. You see, that's what my professor here has done. He has learned that thing. He knows that principle. And he can take the sperm from one woman, uh, the egg from one woman, the sperm from a man, and then put it in another woman who is not related to them. Yes. And the child will grow in that woman and be born. It's like their child, their child that is being born is being born through another woman. Cry. Is that not so? Yes. The surrogate mother. Hey. Children can even be born. 24 weeks, 23. In fact, one day I, I, somebody lost a child who was born 27, 29 weeks or so. And I called one doctor I knew in America. And I was telling him that, oh, 29 and the child couldn't survive. I said, oh, 29. 29, dear. Just say, well, advance, cry. Because he is into neonatal, in neonatology. Yes, neonatology. Do you know neonatology? Ah. It's a doctor who specializes only in unborn children. Yes. Like babies that are born tiny preterm, not unborn, but preterm. Preterms. Like they didn't come at 40 weeks or 38 or 39 weeks. They came at 20, 24, 23, 22. Hey. I said, why do you go and learn this thing? Cry? Hey, this is, even, will you see anything to even do anything on it? So, oh, yeah. Yes. They can find a vein in a baby that is born at 22 weeks, 23 weeks. They've advanced. What I'm saying is that medicine has advanced. Medicine is not coquedro. It's not only... <laughs> Your lack of understanding is what has made you stay with this coquedro. It can cure piles. It can cure romanticism. It can cure uh, high blood pressure, asthma, rashes, blindness. One medicine. <laughs> it does everything. HIV, <laughs> impotence, BBI. Even coronavirus will cry. It can kill all those things. Coronavirus. But you see today, even that they can find a virus for such a pandemic within this short time, it shows the medical breakthrough. Because they said that, look, it will take about two years before they can find. But now they have research going on. I mean, since SARS was, the SARS was not discovered just yesterday. It has been there for years. They've been finding, discovering, test after test, different things. So when this one came, it's like the whole world will come together to find something that can kill it very fast. Now they have MRI. They put you in a machine. They can see any dis discrepancy in your system. Yes. Human beings have developed. But you see, spiritually, we are not developing ourselves and learning and going further in the principles of God's word. Those who have advanced 
in their understanding of biblical principles are also advancing and going to the space of the world of the of of, of spirit, the spiritual realm they are entering into the third heavens they are able to enter into places to see people whether they are in the flesh or in the spirit they can't even tell because when you also advance in spiritual principles you also advance just like medicine has advanced aeroplanes are flying cars are moving faster cars are moving electric cars that don't use petrol yes so now the OPEC that's this uh, Arab nations who make oil and so on they are gradually seeing that a time is coming where oil will not be the main thing that is used for cars so if you are going to stay with just I produce oil I produce oil I produce oil I produce you see that you are getting even recently when there was something even the pandemic they were producing oil and the price was negative it's like they would rather <laughs> it's like they want to dash you the barrels that they are producing because I, it's so much that the price is now negative it's like instead of it cost maybe five dollars or ten dollars per barrel now it cost minus five <laughs> it's like come and take and go and we'll even give you some money as change So now if you go to Dubai, they are more into tourism. They are developing tourism as a means of any money, not just dependent on. So you see them advertising. When you go through Dubai, they'll, be, they'll call you. they say, oh, even you can own houses here. Then they'll give you some arrangement. Oh, you can own a house, a flat. They'll rent it out for you. be earning money. You don't have to live here. They do that a lot. A lot of people have bought flats that they are earning from. Because they are using all those things to also boost their economy. If they depend only on oil, they will die. And here they are cocoa, 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 cocoa. Ghana is the number one producer of cocoa. cocoa. And cocoa, too, we can't even make it into a final product so that we can earn better money from it. Raw na beans na what what shape? No be a man, no the cook chocolate na brown. What what turn it in? What turn it in? Ding ding. So. So, now, enough of the world and its social life and economic life. Now we are into the church. How can we also know that what are the principles, you see, that govern our things that we do? The unshakable ones, solid foundation ones. And with deep understanding, you will see that you are coming into prosperity you are advancing in God. You are seeing supernatural things. You are experiencing supernatural. You are advancing. You are advancing. You can even see visions. Visions of heaven. Visions of angels. Visions of God. You see angels have visited you. You are talking to angels. Because you are advancing in God. And that is why today I'm beginning such an important element for your life. Fantastic. Oh, lahati ko si mahadaya. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in um, Mark, Chapter 4. Okay, I think I'll show you the one in Matthew 13. This one is the parable of the sower, but 
he explains it better in Matthew 13. Um, Are you there still or have you gone home? Look at verse 15. He was asked why he speaks to them in parables. And then he says, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and I should and should be converted and I should heal them you see he was laying out a process and the process culminated or resulted in their healing and before the healing was their conversion before their conversion was the understanding with the heart you see so he says that when people hear Eh, the hearing brings a blessing. And the hearing brings a blessing that brings deep understanding. And the understanding therefore makes you change or get converted. And then you are healed. So deep understanding is for your healing. It's for your deliverance. Yes. Deep understanding. That is why you need to get understanding in Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 7. He says, wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. So with all thy getting, get understanding. Get what? Tell your neighbor, get understanding. So now let's look at the first principle that we need to get understanding for. And it is the principle of salvation seven great principles of salvation how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard them so seven great principles that govern our salvation when you understand it you understand salvation deeply. Some Christians only see church or salvation as which is good, but it's deeper than that. Yes. So, Christo need yet. Was so but our great salvation, like the great attempt to go to the moon or to Mars, great attempt is governed by great principles of, of I don't know what that is, fly, rocket science. Yes. So sometimes when somebody talks to you and you don't understand, he will say, this is not rocket science. <laughs> we do attempt, no, no, but... He didn't say it direct. <laughs> this is not rocket science. It's like I said, so you are thinking too much. It's not rocket science. It means that it's simple to understand. So we are amazed that you don't understand it. So if somebody is insulting you, he says, this is not rocket science. He's, 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 he's trying to insult you in a nice way. He's trying to tell you that, but he's not saying it clearly. <laughs> This is not rocket science. What I'm trying to say is this. It means that Ade, is there a sour in your head? All that I'm saying, can you not understand? Is it only coconut water that is in your head or what? They, they, they are not saying all those words, but in a nutshell, that's what they mean. It's not rocket science. I can mean no No Ah.
I mean, it's a nice way, but it's a nice way of saying it's not complicated. Or it's, not, it's not complicated, but it's also a day. Well, go school. So, our salvation is governed by principles. And number one, principle, and I'm giving you just a foundation for today, and then we we'll continue next week, is that man is a spirit. He has a soul, and he lives in a body. Write it down. Man is what? A spirit. Uh huh. He has a soul and he lives in a body. Say that again. Man. Uh huh. Yes. Those of you watching on Facebook, please say it after me. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. All the way to the back. Say after me. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the Bible says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? Yes. So a human being, a man, a human being, when we say man, we are talking about homo sapiens and not just man as in the male species of the humankind. We are talking about both male and female for those of you who are into these type of things. Yes. A man is a spirit. From this verse, we are being shown that there is a three-part being that we call man. But he actually explains that you have a, a you are man. He says your whole spirit and soul and body, which means you there is something you which is spirit, and something you, which is soul, and something you, which is body. If you have not understood this, you don't really understand what salvation is. If you have not understood this, you will not really understand when we are talking about developing your spirit, I was in the spirit, I pray with my spirit, do you understand? Because you don't know the distinction because as far as you are concerned, you are just a body. But from the verse, your whole spirit is there, your whole soul is there, and your whole body. So the body is there, the soul is there, and the spirit is there. And many Christians have not advanced in the principles governing salvation so they don't understand so many things and therefore cannot do so many things you are just like somebody who cannot go to mass or don't, you don't even know what, what is mass 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 bass and i say mass mass and now mathematics no am i on the mass 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 no ma mars it's a planet. One of the planets. Eh, yeah. hey, planet is what? <laughs> Captain Planet. And I say, planet to anyone. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that you need a great understanding. And the first thing you must understand, in order to understand salvation deeply and advance in your Christianity and spirituality, is that man is number one, a spirit. Number two, he has a soul. And number three, he lives in a body. Yes. And you have to understand that. When you don't understand it, you will not advance. These are basic principles. When you go to school, they, for example, if they teach you board mass, it's a basic principle of mathematics. And you use it until you die. You will never get to a place where board mass is not necessary. But we learned board mass maybe in class 
five or class four or class four. Yeah, class four. When you are starting to add three numbers <laughs> and four numbers, yes, and then you are going to do plus this minus this times this divided by this. Uh-huh. And they may not teach you again when you are in the university, but that foundation you had when you were in class four is what is carrying you. If you didn't understand that principle, I tell you, you will struggle in university. Even some people, I tell you, there was somebody who should have got first class. And there was a, just a mathematical, you should have got maybe, if you had gotten 75% in that particular paper, the GPA would have gone to 3.6, which is first class, borderline, pepe, 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 pepe. But it was something minus something plus something times something. And forgot to use the principle of board mass in university. Oh. So he just did it raw as he saw the thing. No, Minus this plus this times this divided by this. So by the time he was divided, you know, the number was very complex. It's like, ah, what number is this that I'm going to... <laughs> to f-? And then you have a square root of that thing. You know, they're not saying... And that is why he says, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? And this is one of our major foundations. The foundation that man is a spirit. When I say it, you shout it after me. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. So let me just explain that to you in a few minutes. And then we can go for lunch. Yes. Are you there still or you've gone home? In Genesis, God created man. And the Bible says, he breathed into his nostrils. And man became a living soul. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Means that God used raw materials on earth it's not talking about just dust as in the brown paper powder that's used because in human beings there is the hair black i'm sure god found some material something on earth in the ground and use it for your hair yes that's why we can have hair products that improve your hair quality they must, they have, must have found some chemicals in some aloe vera, some chemicals in some plants, something, something, something. And I'm sure there are chemicals. If you pass it on your hair, like Nyosa, you will have hair again. <laughs> I'm sure there are things like that. Yeah. There are things that you can use to smear on your skin that can make the texture of your skin remain youthful for a long time. There are anti-wrinkle serums that when people use, even though they are aging, they don't age that fast. Yeah, so when you stand by your age mate, you see that why what why chum chum channel? <laughs> And some of the people in the village, if they had some of the creams you are using, they will look nicer than you. And if they could do their hair like you have done your hair, they will be Miss Garnes and Miss Weld. But they are direct sunshine. They have not drunk milk. They don't eat fish. I mean, they don't eat, I mean, it's like just raw materials. <laughs> Are you there still? So when God formed man, I'm sure he found something that he used for your eyes. Yes. So he slotted the balls there and connected some wires at the back. Connected. So that when this one sees, this one sees, then connects to the brain. Pa, 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 pa. He connected it. Then you use something for the veins. Hey, Fawibra. 
He formed, formed man out of the ground. The nails, check your horn and say, no, fuse it together so that it grows, grows, grows. When your body is growing, your nails also grow. Yes. And nails, you have to be cutting it, cutting it otherwise. And you need the nails to, 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 to sort of give the feet stability. Otherwise, if, if your nails are not there, you can't have traction. If you go forward, it's like they're trying to hold the body together. When you are tilting forward, it's not there. So your nails, eh, they stabilize you. From the ground, he found all those things. But it was like how we do clay. We use clay to make a human being. It's there. It's, it, it cannot have life. You have eyes for your clay, but the eyes cannot see. You can even make a carving from a tree, but the tree cannot see. But when God looked at the man he had made, he decided to let it come alive so that it can talk, it can think, it can reason, it can do things. So he breathed the breath of God. And the breath of God was your spirit and soul coming into your body. That part... The body was the one that was made from the ground. So when you die, the Bible says, Thus thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. So that body you have is for the ground. So after many years, if you dig up a grave, you will see nothing. All the bones, all that, everything is finished. It disappears. That's why if you go to Awudomi, they resurface their graves and bury people again in the same place. Because some of the graves, there's nothing in the coffins. Everything is finished. Only the coffin, if it's met. So, in some cemeteries, they don't allow you to use metal. Because the metal cannot decay. But the wood can decay. And the body also can decay. And they cannot finish and disappear after some years. Yes, disposable coffins. So, your body is a disposable body. That's why when you die, nobody keeps their dead body in their house. No matter how you love your mother, no matter how you love your father or your wife or your sibling, when the person dies, you, 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 you throw him away. Because the body is not the person. The real person eh, who now assumes the shape of the person and how the person is, who is recognizable, that part goes out of the person. And that is the spirit and the soul. Now the spirit is the breath of God. That is the invisible part. And the soul is made up of your intellect, your emotions, do you understand? Your will, your reasoning capacity. They are all parts. So sometimes your soul is referred to as the mind. But it's not just your mind. Because your mind seems to think of only the one you used to think. But the soul is what makes you connect to your world. So when you feel sad, your soul is at work. When you feel happy, your soul is at work. When you are depressed, your soul is weak, weakened. Uh Aha. Are you listening to me? When you are thinking, it's your soul. It's imagining, thinking, reasoning. Your ability to choose. It was put there by God because God didn't want um, a computer or some kind of robot. That when you, you call him, say praise the Lord. Then praise the Lord, 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 praise the Lord. Then you press, pam, then it stops. So it means that if God wants praises, he has to now press a button. Press, then praise you, praise you, praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. After some time, you will not like it again. Hey, shut that thing down. Meanwhile, he's saying praise him, praise him. You are Lord, 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 you are Lord. You at five o'clock. At five a.m. 
Sing, you are worthy, 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 you are worthy. Twelve noon. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him, oh, praise him, oh, praise him. At a point, you shut it down. Praises are nicer when it is done from a person's own volition or own will. Will, that's the soul. That's why he put a soul there. So that you can have a choice and voluntarily make that choice to praise him, to love him, and to worship him. He put the soul there. If you didn't have a soul, you wouldn't be able to relate with your world. If you are sad, you, there will be nothing like crying. So when a person dies eh, and you see the body laid in state, there's no soul in it and there is no uh, spirit in it. It's gone. Both are, all are gone. That's why we are all crying over the dead body and the dead body cannot cry. But before Jesus died, as they were leading him to Golgotha, the Bible says the women were crying and he told them that weep not for me but for yourself. He could relate with them when he had not died. When he died, he couldn't relate in that way. So man is a spirit in his real sense. And in the Bible, there are different phrases that are used to represent the spirit of a man, the inner part of a man. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16, we are told the in, uh, inner man. Yes. Beautiful. He says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So there is an inner man. And then uh, Corinthians says there is an outward man. Though our outward man perishes, our inward man. So 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says our inward man. The same, so the spirit of a man is equal to the inner man and is also equal to the inward man. And then the, th the third or fourth uh, synonym is, is the hidden man of the heart. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, you read about the woman. The Bible says that let them be in subjection to their own husbands. Um, and so on, verse 2 says that uh, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear for the woman then verse 3 says who's adorning for the woman your adorning or your dressing let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair which is your outer body and then of wearing of gold which is your around your neck or your wrist or your ankle ankle anklet which is your outer body or the putting on of dress apparel which is your outer body but let it be the hidden man of the heart so there's dressing for the hidden man of the heart, the inside, the one who is inside. When you don't have this understanding, you will dress your body, you will do your hair, you will do your, uh, this one is called what? Eyebrows. Eyebrows. You will do your eyelashes, you will, you, you will do mascara, or you extend it. Is that not uh, waxing? You wax it? You extend, and then you can extend, and then you wax the eyebrows too. Don't you wax eyebrows? They wax their eyebrows. Yes. Yes. To make it thicker. Is that not so? Uh, to what? To thin it. And line it. Yes. Yes. So if, if you're a brother, you don't understand this thing. But the sisters, no. They are more into outward adorning. That's why the, he's referring to their outward adorning. Because brothers, they Look, I have some guys in my house. I got them a wardrobe. Then I went to see how they had arranged the room. And the, when I got that, I said, ah, <laughs> you see, where are your things? Oh, jeans, me, you be. And then, boxer shorts, bare four, be. That's all. Then, after that, t-shirts, bare five. That's all. They finished. I don't think they even have hair permit. <laughs> But if you have a lady, oh, I tell you, they have different hairs, different wigs, they have different makeup kits, wardrobe for shoes, wardrobe for skirts, wardrobe for tops, then they have handbags, wardrobe for handbags. 
Oh, you want to fall in love. You don't know what it means. Oh, the ought to honor more kekena. Oh, for say being in love is just you see a girl you are following. Share. Be ready to buy bags. Be ready to buy shoes. Be ready to buy wigs. Be ready to buy tops. Be ready to buy bottoms. Be ready to buy shoes and and scarves before body packs. Sisters, am I saying the right thing? Or oh, you don't want to mind me over here? There are no sisters here. Am I saying the right thing? So the outer outward man, eh, he's dressed. A lot of time is spent on, it, on, 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 on him or on her. We bath it. We deodorize it. We powder it. We perfume it. We massage it. We lotion it. We shampoo it. We cocoa butter, shea butter it. We unkuto it. We body spa it. Massaging, waxing, removal of hair, trimming of hair, shaping of hair, oiling of hair, coloring of hair. Some are brown, some are blue, some are orange, some are black. Then we splash, body splash, the outward man. But the inward man, you see, where he says, but let it be the hidden, you see what he was saying, is that let the dressing be the dressing of the hidden man, not just the dressing of the outward man because the hidden man no, his, his, his dressing is that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price God is not bothered about your hair he is not bothered so much about your mascara, your rouge or your, your, the painting of the nails God is more concerned about the hidden man. What kind, of, what kind of dressing, what kind of product comes out of that hidden man? What is coming out of that hidden man? Is it a meek and quiet spirit or a be- be- belligerent, bellicose and querulous type of spirit? And when you are a Christian and you don't understand this basic truth, that you are not just a body. Look at uh, Luke chapter 16. Luke 16, let's start from verse 19. Luke 16, verse 19. He says, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in uh, purple and fine linen. Outward man was dressed. He fed sumptuously every day. That means that, oh, did he switch <laughs> yeah, he eats very sumptuously, very nice toast. Yes, first course, second course, third course. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sauce, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sauce, and it came to pass that the beggar died was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. Man, poor man will die, rich man will die. No matter how rich you are, no matter how your outward man is fed, no matter how it is dressed, one day, one day, one day, it will leave this earth. It will die. And it will be buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham far off, afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. I thought his eyes were buried when we went for the way keeping his eyes were there. I thought his fingers eh, and his, his head, everything was there at the way keeping. So why is he, has he got another set of eyes that he's lifting up? And he cried. It means he had a voice. His vocal cords were even working. 
And if your vocal cords are working, then I'm sure some other, uh, the trachea, lungs, or so far got diaphragm. I mean, they are working. Because for you to generate some kind of sound that is a cry, your diaphragm must move up and expand your lungs so that when you open your, uh, your voice, a sound that is louder than just a whisper can come out. Your diaphragm must move up. So, why, why did he get that from and all this thing for, for him to make a sound? He cried and said, he could speak. Father Abraham, he could remember the name of a person. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus. He thought he was still a big man who can be sending people. That he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Tongue! Finger! For I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham says, son, remember thou in thy lifetime. Remember. Remembrance means that there was even still brain somewhere that could think and that could remember things. In thy lifetime, thou receivest good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to thence to you cannot and neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Like we can't cross where you are to where, where, where you are to where we are, from where we are to where you are from where you are to where we are. Then he said, I pray thee therefore Father that thou would send him to my father's house for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them. He could remember his brothers on earth. Lest they also come unto this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, they have, the, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Then he said, no, 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 no. If somebody was to rise from the dead and go there, they would rather repent when somebody comes from the dead. And Abraham said, no, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither would they be persuaded if somebody returned from the dead. And I think after that, he was quiet. Hey, brothers and sisters, it means that this thing they are describing, which has crossed from, which like the body has died. James, the Bible says that in the book of James, it says the body without the spirit is dead. That's what death means. You may have died by an accident, you may have, but when, when you die, when your spirit has not left your body, the part of your body will just be mutilated or spoiled or destroyed, but you are still alive. But the day your spirit detaches itself from the body, it is dead. If it detaches from the leg, you, your leg will die. When your leg has died, that's what the spiritual meaning is that your spirit has detached from that part. For as the body without the spirit is dead, James 2.26, so faith uh, without works is dead also. But the basic principle here is that the body, you see, it's a principle. He's using it to even show us how faith works. So the principle is that the body without the spirit dies. Uh -huh. So when you die, your spirit continues to live. And you are still able to feel because your soul is there and you feel torment. You, are, you cry. <laughs> You still have emotions because the soul is still there. You still remember because your soul, the intellect is still there. You still remember. You still know names. You still remember places. You still remember people. This basic understanding you must have. Everybody listen to me. Listen carefully. Without the spirit, you are finished. And God is showing you that you are not just a body that you spend so much time on the body you dress the body, you feed the body, you strengthen the body you exercise the body, Bible says that bodily exercise profited little but godliness which is spiritual exercises is profitable unto all things First Timothy 4 8 for bodily exercise profited little but godliness is profitable unto all things so this understanding is what you must have. So that in your life, you don't just spend time only on the outward man. 
on the outward man, but also on the inner man, also on the inward man, also on the, on the hidden man of the heart. So sometimes you see the word, and, 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 and I will take away the heart of stone, heart. He's talking about the one inside. Yes, I'll take away your heart of stone. And I'll put a heart of flesh. That means that when you are born again, that's what happens. That God takes away the stony one. Because the one that was there is dead. It cannot connect to God anymore. So when you are born again, God affects your spirit. And removes the old one and puts a new one there which can feel God. So that when, when you, you can be sensitive to spiritual things. Because this is where the, the, the contest or the competition begins. Because your spirit is alive to God. And your flesh is alive to the world. The flesh sees, feels, smells, hears, tastes. So the things of the world are coming through your senses. And the flesh feels them, sees them, hears them all the time. So the flesh is prone to worldly things. But the spirit is now a new spirit created after God to relate with God and connect to God. The spirit. The new one that is given to you. In 2 uh, uh, Corinthians 5.17 it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So you are a new creature. Not that, and the outward man is not new, but the inward man is now new. You are now born again. So now your spirit is the one that has been born again. So there's a baby in your body who is now this new spirit that has been created. That's why the Bible says that as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. The growth is not in the body. The growth is in the spirit that has now been recreated. Yes. Yes. So if you don't understand this basic truth, and principle, you will not know what has happened to you when you are born again. And you will not even appreciate when we say born again because it is in Christ that there is hope for humanity. But in your flesh, Paul says that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So if you are just following your outward man, I tell you, you are going to finish. Paul said, I delight to do thy law after the inward man. I want to do your will after the inward man. It's like in my inside, in my inner part, in me, in the, the one who lives inside, he delights to do the law. According to Romans 7, 22, he says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. I delight. <laughs> In my inside. But the outward man, he is not interested. And the only way to let the spirit continue to connect to God and do what it feels like doing, because it has been created to be able to fulfill God's law and follow God's law, love God, serve God, pursue God, and know God. But the outward man, which is perishing, which is decaying, that outward man, no, he's not interested at all. Hey, any spiritual thing that your spirit wants to do, it's not. So in Galatians 5.16, Galatians 5.16, it tells you where the contest is. The contest is between the spirit and the flesh. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17 says, For the flesh lasteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that you would. Has it been okay to, have, has it occurred to you that sometimes you want to do something past spiritual, but you're not able to do it? Uh, this is the contest. So you are not able to do the things you would. Give me NIV or NLT, any of them, at least just to help us get a little deeper understanding of this. Say, the sinful nature, that's the flesh, wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. So what the spirit wants, like Paul said, I delight 
in the law of God after the inward man. So the inside there, Charlie, who person your papa? But the sinful, the flesh, dwelleth no good thing. So he says, and the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. These two are always fighting. So you have good intentions. I want to serve God. I want to be in church every Sunday. I want to be a center leader. I want to be a, a, a center director. I want to serve God. I want to really be spiritual. This is my year. Pa, that this year, dear. Backsliding, pa, friend, backsliding, me, backsliding, be da. Fornication, friend, fornication, me, be da. I mean, me, ye, be da, me. Oh, now me, be a, me, dodo. Good intention. And that's where the, there's a contest always because this is what your spirit wants, but the flesh on pain. You see, the, the flesh is always fighting the spirit, and the spirit is also fighting the flesh. Unfortunately, for many Christians, the spirit is not, it's a, still a newborn baby. Until you near who are doing pizza, and now who number no, we did fifty two. Who number macho? Who number no we did t? He is always eating morning, afternoon, and evening. I mean, he the the who number no? Wow, you you jarring that dressing, that polishing, that perfume no. So, and now why she body magic? And why you come? And all that is coming. Kaya kaya kaya. Here I am. I'm here. I am also here. The body likes to sleep. Jesus went to pray with the disciples. Are you hearing me, those of you? Asha, Asha, don't listen to take your phone and be talking to anybody. Eh? Try and stabilize yourself. Are you listening to me at the back there? Can you hear me well? Very good. Jesus went to pray with the disciples in Matthew 26. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh, my father. Oh, give me the verse before because he he sent, he went with Peter. Then he said unto, no, verse verse 37. Okay. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and heavy. And then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. That means that stay awake and wait, just as I am also waiting. Then he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Then he says, And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? One hour prayer time, oh, they fell asleep. Then listen to what he said to them. He said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation for the spirit indeed is willing. That means the spirit is willing to pray. The spirit is willing to do spiritual activity. But the flesh is weak. How many have slept when they were, were really wanted to pray? Me too. You won't lift your hand. There's a pile of crumb will be that. And what I said, who do honor? Yeah. How many have taken your Bible and opened it? But before you realize, it was on your chest and you had gone to bed long time. I fell on your face. My iPad has hit my teeth before. Flesh and wow. Hey, pastor's flesh. Uh, reverence flesh. Uh, why bishop's flesh? Oh, but center leader's flesh. Why why center director's flesh? Singer's flesh. It's the same type of flesh. It is weak. And if you are not, you don't allow your spirit to grow and develop and be strong. 
I tell you, you will not know why you are always falling. And you are always falling because you have not developed the inward man, the inner man, the hidden man of the heart, the one who is created after God in righteousness and true holiness. You will not do the things you would. Because your flesh is always beating your spirit. It's like a, a school. Every time you go, one small boy, you see that you have to run. You have to run. They send you just now. But even in the same school, when you find some small boys, from one boys, they are very big. Because some people, they grow in the village. They finish middle school living certificate before they come to form one. So they are around 16, 17 years when they come to form one. And all from one boys around 11 and 10. 10, 11, 12. Then you find one of them who's in Hunam, their legs are full of hairs. Hey! 10 year old small boys, even pubic hair you don't have. You are now <laughs> developing. When we go to the bathroom, you see that, hey, your fellow from one boy, he's like Esau. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Hey, hey. Even sometimes we are told that they have three or four children before they come to the school. One guy cried. They said he, he and his son had come to the school. His son is in another house and he's also in another house. Just a we giant. He's some old man. His voice is stronger than the voice of the from four boys and from five boys. They can't send him. I used to have one in my, my dormitory. When they shout, one small boy, they don't get up. They lie in their bed. If we feel like come, come and push them. Break your job, yeah. He says, the spirit is warring against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit so that you cannot do the things you would. That's why we are not able to do the things we would. And the more you allow your flesh to win the war, the more fleshly and the fleshly desires and lusts you fulfill. And it doesn't discriminate whether you are a small boy or you are a grown-up. Whether you are a woman or a, a small girl. Or whether you, are, um, whether you are a bishop or you are a new convert. Flesh is flesh. It is the deep understanding of this principle that gives you victory in this life. So that if you have to overcome some sexual sins or some addictions of your life, then you know where to go. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. I'm ending. Yes, 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 yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 27. says, but I keep my body under. I keep under my body. And bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That's why pastors can, be, can end up in hell. Yes. That's why preachers can also make serious spiritual errors. Because if you don't control, your spirit does not overcome your fleshly things. Huh? You have prayed to others. They are saved. They are developed. They are strong. But you yourself have become a castaway. And how do you do that? Paul, the preacher, the apostle, he said, I keep under. Give us another translation because this one may be amplified or something. You know, one of these type of. Okay, NLT. I discipline. No, discipline like an athlete. I discipline my body. Okay, amplified. But like a boxer, I buffet my body. That means handle it roughly, discipline it by hardships, and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, or be unapproved and rejected as a counterfeit. That's why people are rejected. Yes. Because... My spirit wants to preach, but my flesh needs water. 
And thankfully, drinking water during preaching is not wrong, so I'm at liberty to do so. But like a boxer, okay, mini spirit, okay, mini, huh? Bam! Down the flesh. Then the spirit does what it wants to do. But if the spirit is, then the flesh will keep boom, boom. Then he's running away. Then the flesh does what it wants to do more. That's why Paul said, I preach a Paul. I, the apostle Paul, a person who has seen Jesus and fell from his horse and heard a voice, became blind, later recovered from blindness and was given a ministry in a radical way. He is keeping his body under. Now, oh singer, oh dancer, Dancer, was this mood in Din Din say? If you don't understand it, it is your own undoing. This is the most important principle, basic, that you need in your life as a Christian. I am not just a body. If I allow my body, it will disgrace me. Yes. If you allow. And you see, the interesting thing is that the flesh is sweet. Yes. That's why the Bible calls it pleasures of sin for a season. Yes. Pleasures of sin for a season. And you have to get to a place where Sin is not that pleasurable. Or even though it's pleasurable, you are not lured by the pleasures. Or if you want to just follow pleasures. When we go to heaven, the Bible says, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. As for that one, when we get there, there are pleasures. But for now, no. We have to Give our, give our buffet, our body, treating it harshly and roughly, disciplining it, do you understand? With hardships. Because your skin, they sweet you. Now, policy when you chat. So, now, she when him, she, she, she. Ten minutes. She, 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 she. Move here and stand over here. And sometimes, if there's a portal here, it can take fifteen minutes. Now, foundation. No, no, we increase the foundation. Then you can't see well, so you have to take a second mirror. So that this one is looking here and reflecting it here. Then you can see. You filled all the portals. And all the while, no, the inward man, the Janaho, is crying, I've not eaten. I need milk. I've not drunk milk. You see, and when a child doesn't drink milk and now he starts eating, <laughs> they are different in their growth. <laughs> a child who didn't drink milk and grew <laughs> and started eating fufu. Yeah? Aki and Popo. You see that it's a grown up by very small. <laughs> <laughs> I 
You see, some of you didn't get milk and this type of nanwan and SMA gold and I mean Tom Brown. Coco Nsio Poponsu. And they started giving you mash kenke, mash kenke and pepper, mash kenke pepper. By eight months, who did bankune fish? Hey! What you say? Akola no niha. Coronavirus cannot catch him. God, Honamu a day. Hey! Six months, you are eating yam. <laughs> Hey, Gary and beans and cocoa, they mash it and <laughs> give you. Hey. Your immunity, you know, it was established very early. <laughs> Asymptomatic. Kai. Whether first strain or second strain or third strain of <laughs> Corona Barrop, won't it she? Was. She. Never eating vegetables, da. Vegetables, what do you Vegetables, no money, milk. Ah! Broccoli, she. Ah! Ebune bunun kwai. She. Snails. Yes. Mammy cries you. Snails, they are soft in tea. Me banu timi di snails. Five months. Oh, now we record to him. No wonder. By age 18. What is that? Jay, what the hey, fuck? If you are playing soccer with people, they shouldn't touch your leg. Because... But then I count my but then I count my head dislocation. <laughs> He's finished. <laughs> By 17, you look like 46. And that's why your spirit man is crying. I need food. I've not eaten bread. I need milk. And you never you never mind him. Never mind him. Because you cannot see him in your mirror. But you can see him in the mirror of the word. For he who so looketh into the perfect law of liberty. He not being a forgetful hearer. But a doer of the work. That man shall be blessed in all his deeds. Beautiful. Beautiful. It is only in the perfect law. That there is a mirror for the spirit man. Yes. In that law, you will see whether your baby is a, your, your spirit is a baby or is a child. Yes. Or is a mature man. Or is carnal. But when you are looking in the mirror, when you are, you are carnal, you can't see that you are carnal in the mirror. Because what you see is a nice hair, is nice dress, is nice makeup, is nice hairdo, is nice outline of your mustache and your, your, your um, side bends. But you don't see the spirit. That's why many of us don't work on the spirit. If you don't understand this principle, you will never have your quiet time consistently. And when you don't have your quiet time consistently, you know that your spirit is stunted in growth. This is the reason why many Christians don't go from one level to the other. Because they don't understand that they have left their spirit behind as their body is going. And then your mind, your soul, your soul is developed by your education, by the things you read, the things you see, the things that information you get, and the things you hear, and things like that. So what it is is that sometimes your mind is developed, you are very academic, you are very good, intelligent, everything. But your spirit has been left far behind. As your mind has been developed to doctorate level, your spirit is now at class two. Because it has not been developed. When you even come to church and they preach, you don't remember anything. You don't build on the knowledge. 
You can't share your knowledge with anybody. You can't explain it to anyone. You can't tell anybody what you believe. You are not solid on what you believe because you don't take time for your spirit to be developed. By changing from today, your spirit is going to gain the ascendancy. It's going to overcome the flesh. It's going to win the war that is between the spirit and the flesh. And it's going to go forward and advance and be established in God. Brothers and sisters, this is what God wants you to understand. But this principle... Is what will make you, it will help you to develop and go higher and higher in God. What did Paul say? He says, I will pray with my understanding and I will pray with my spirit. Yes. I will pray with my understanding. I will pray with my spirit. That's the fight is always spirit flesh. Spirit flesh. With whichever one wins, then you see that you are either spiritual or you are more fleshly and sensual or carnal. And I'm telling you, the fight is not like now that you have been in the law for 10 years, you are now a master of your flesh. It's not like that at all. I wish the fight will end when you have been in the law for 10 years or 15 years. But the fight doesn't end. And the fight doesn't end because we are still at it. I've known the Lord from 1976, but I'm still in the fight. I'm still fighting. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. But I'm winning. At the end of the day, my graph is going forward like this. It's going higher. Like that. That's why we win souls. That's why we go for outreach. When we go for outreach, we are going for outreach because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That word perish is, is, is like that will not die because the soul that sinneth it shall die. And there's a second death after the first death. But Jesus came so that you will not experience the second death. For those who are born once, they die twice. And those who are born twice, eh, they die once. Because through Christ, you escape the second death. So the second death doesn't come on you. Yes. And evangelism is to afford all and sundry the opportunity of salvation through the grace of God that has come by Jesus Christ salvation through Christ. So when you see somebody, the Bible says, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. When you see people, don't only see them as, oh, no we are fair. Oh, or you're nice. When Ebony died, so many people were sad. Even Christians were followers of Ebony. And then they were sad because how can such a beautiful girl you see, her physical death was of concern to you, but her, if she's in hell, it is not of concern to you. Because for you, you know, the nice body should not die like that. But that nice body, eh, whether, <laughs> whether even, if it, even if it lives, I'm sure 10 years after the time she died, nobody will listen to her music again. Because by that time, now I hear Kekraka, and I say, well, yeah, what's the And the body would have changed. She didn't use to sing with Bratu. One day, she was being interviewed by Dile Dile. I said that, I said, you are not wearing bra. She said, I. <laughs> and then she said, Mama, I don't know what you are She was on television, no bra. She was just so she told her that gravity will come on it and then it will a bit shank of them. Now I do one bed. No, so we do one eye. You have a Jossum. You have a Jossum. 
So her outward man was very nice to all of us. But what we must be concerned about is what is going to happen to her inward man. Is it still dead in unrighteousness and in sin? Or that it has been renewed through the new birth of Christ? It must be of concern to you. That's why we go for so. That's why Christians don't go for so. Because they don't understand what we are dealing with. You think you are dealing with a handsome man or a beautiful girl. Evangelism is about the soul of a person, which is which takes after the person's outward body. But when the man went to hell, he saw Lazarus. He recognized him that he used to be the man by his house. He knew him. And he didn't care about the Moses and the prophet. That's why he ended up in hell. Because it wasn't that he was rich that he went to hell. But it was because he did not listen to Moses and the prophets. That's what Abraham told him that. The evangelism of those days was to listen to Moses and the prophets. If you don't hear them, even if somebody comes from the dead, you will not hear him. And today, the salvation is we preaching. The gospel is us preaching. You are preaching, I am preaching. You are building people up. I am building people up. And that's what is our Christianity. So the foundation of Christianity is that man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. God is going to strengthen you. Yes. And that's why in um, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16, he says that God will grant you eh, according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The inner man's strength is what you need. So that when it's time for prayer, you can pray and not let the flesh gain the ascendancy. Why It means you are always allowing your flesh to win. But from today, flesh will not win. Soul will not win. Spirit will win. Spirit will win. Your spirit will win. My spirit will win. Your spirit will win. From victory to victory until we see the master's face. Clap your hands and stand to your feet. Ah, lifting up of the hand. Hallelujah. Take a moment. Pray. Open your mouth. Don't look at anybody. Don't look at your friend. Don't look at your sister. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, I am praying about my inner man. I've allowed my flesh to reign. I've allowed my flesh to rule. But Lord, I am looking at your word now. I can see my spirit has not been strengthened. I've seen uh, that my flesh has not has gained always been strengthened. Uh, but to the detriment of my spirit. Uh, but today I am praying. Masota kandele mika rapatori imashande. Nikendele mosibiaba, masandere miki beriele, zio pata, matendere me, kibara, rapandele mo, shibere bede, bere bede, makaparia, basondere mede, hikaparia basandere mede, ropadia ba, shetere beka, ma pande ideria basa, fendere mekaya, hile mo shandere meke, palaba. Are you praying? Are you praying fervently? Are you praying like your life depends on it? Are you praying? Pray. For your inner man to be strengthened uh, with might by his spirit. Na kotariyama, janta beri mika, ma panderi bidia, jo sandini mika be, ma pandara bakaria, re panderi mika baya, endo boria mashanda, ikendere bo saveria, ra panderi mike beria, zam panderi mika, he la boria basale, me kanderi mika paya. Everybody lifting up your voice. Uh, Pray to be strengthened with might in the inner man by his spirit. Rapandere moka, ye pandere mikeberia, me paria mashandere mete, 
Ziki Ababaya, Anda Beri Mikaya, Repanderi Mikaya, Ibandori Mikaya, Ibasori Yamaha, Maperi Yamaha, Rapanderi Yamaha, Janteri Mika, Baya Kapaya, Napariyama, Rapariyama, 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 Ikeperi, Zontama, Zontama Kataya, Eya Mahandaraba, be strengthened in your inner man, in the inward man, in the hidden man of the heart. It must put on the dresses, it must put on, it must put on the makeup, it must put on, it must put on the dressing, the ornaments of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. Maperia, Rabondele Mika, Maparia Machine, Robocotoriaba, Mapandara Macabaria, Rabandara Mama. Clap your hands and pray. Pray for strength in your inner man. Pray to be strengthened with might. Ala makata me pandarabada, rapandarabada, rapandabara, rapandaraba, rapandabaya, ela makapa, rapakabaraba, me pandarabada, repandarabada, yetaba, rapandaria, anna maria, rekazanda, repandaraba, jetamara, repada, ne canare, semanare. Remanare, remanare, ne marama, hey, hey, kabaraba barabada, setatori amana. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God, I stand. My heart is overflowing. My heart is overflowing. My love just keeps on My growing. Love just keeps on growing. Oh, here in the grace of God I stand. I am a new creation. No more in condemnation. I am a new creation. No more in condemnation. Oh, here in the grace of God I stand. My heart is overflowing. My heart is so. My love just keeps on growing. My love just keeps on growing. Here in the grace, here in the grace of God I stand. And I will praise. And I will praise you, Lord. Yes, I will praise. And I will sing of all that you have done. Oh, and I, a joy that knows no limit, the lightness, the lightness in my spirit. Oh, here in the grace of God. And I will praise, and I will New creation, shout it! I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God, I stand. My heart is overflowing. My heart is overflowing. My love just keeps on growing. Oh, come on, sing it like you mean it. Here in the grace of God, I stand. 
and I will praise, and I will praise you, Lord. Yes, I will praise you, Lord, and I will sing of all that you have done. Yeah, 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 yeah. A joy that knows no limit, the lightness in my spirit, hearing the grace of God. He rescued the souls. His blood has covered the saints. I believe, oh yes, I believe. My shame is taking away. My shame is taking away. And my pain, my pain is healed in His name. I believe, yes I do. Yes I do. I believe. I'll raise my banner high. I'll raise my banner. become new you are winning every day you are overcoming your flesh every day and you are living in the spirit every day tell your neighbor I'm always walking in victory you are blessed clap your hands unto the Lord now before we leave here tonight there are some people who need to receive salvation you cannot enjoy Christ without real salvation. And wherever you are standing today, I want us to close our eyes. And if you are here this afternoon, you are not born again. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to pray with you. And I want to help you to know Jesus. You will go to heaven when you die. And it shall be well with you and your loved ones. If you are here like that, I want you to lift up your right hand so I can pray with you. God bless you. I see your hand. I see your hand. Somebody invited you here, but you are not a serious Christian. You are not born again. You don't go to church properly. Today is the day that you must take God seriously and stop playing games with him. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand. I'm going to pray with you. Yes, I see your hand. So many hands. Lift them up. Lift them up. Oh, let it go up higher so I can see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you have lifted your hand, come to me right in front here. 
so I can pray with you. And if you are watching on Facebook, there is a number on the screen. If you are watching on YouTube, there is a number on the screen. If you are listening on Sweet Melody Still, it is 27 1926 Please connect to it and receive um, some counseling and instructions before... Oh, walk faster, please. Thank you. Walk faster. forgotten all right lift up your hands and pray this prayer with me say after me heavenly father say it loud heavenly father i thank you for today i come to you just as i am please forgive me for all my sins and wash me with your precious blood lord jesus thank you for dying on the cross for me from today I belong to Jesus. I will follow Jesus for the rest of my days. Heavenly Father, lift up your hands, brother. Lift up your hands. Say after me, Heavenly Father, please write my name in the book of life. Please write my name in the book of life. I'm yours forever. And I will serve you for the rest of my days. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Please follow Pastor Emmanuel. God bless you. And those of you on Facebook, the number is still on the screen, 027-631-1926. Send a text to it. Send a message to it. You can even just say yes or just say hello, and it will be understood. And they will talk to you and, and guide you so you can be established in the Lord. Hallelujah. We believe the Word of God has come to you and you have been blessed by this sermon. Subscribe to this channel and get notified about every video posted.